Welcome, friends, today. We are continuing on with our exploration of the house of Parfum Dempier. Lovely. And today, the sample pack has blessed us with five normal, well-packed, well-behaved sample sizes. Just legendary. Thank God. So... Today we have Fougere Bengal, Yuzu Fu, Aziyade, Trois Fleurs, and Wazamba. I will appropriate some smelling sticks. One, two, three, four, five. And we will begin. So, so far I've found at least two fragrances that I want to try on skin. One is Vetiver Bourbon and the other is Ambra Russe. Now there might be more, you never know. But that will come later. First off today, we are trying Fougere Bengal. Now, what does that mean? Fougère Bengal. Obviously it's gonna be a Fougère, but what's the Bengal part talking about? It was released in 2007. The untamed scent for adventurous travelers kicks off with English barbershop lavender and lands in the rich hay scent of Assam tea plantations. Blonde tobacco softened with tonka bean conjure the savannas of India. So, the notes are lavender, ginger, tea, and mint, hay, tobacco, pepper, oak moss, tonka bean, patchouli, and vanilla. So, there we are. I'm enjoying the sample set so far. It was quite expensive though. 80 quid. Ooh. Right, straight away, I'm getting a touch of Reeve Gauche. Yeah, big lavender at the top. Something fresh though, but also a little bit dark. Vanilla. Getting a little bit of that, that zat. I'm getting a little bit of that kind of zesty, that zesty zest from the ginger, giving it that kind of fizz. Maybe the mint is giving it some lift as well, you know? It's very good. I like this. Touch of the Shergeese with the hay and the tobacco being very present, being, being very forthcoming. There's a darkness there though. I imagine it's from the tea and the patchouli and the pepper and obviously the tobacco as well, but. It's interesting. It starts off very Reeve Gauche. You'll know what I mean, that creamy kind of lavender vanilla patchouli thing that goes on in Fougères. Oh, I like this, I like this kind of fragrance, to be honest. And excuse me whilst I hydrate. Fresh, a little bit dark, a little bit creamy it's nice though the tea and the pepper give this kind of twist like the hair as well 
There's a little bit of the base of Dolce and Gabbana pour on. It's like an amalgamation of like different scents that you've smelled before. Imagine like Shergi and Dolce and Gabbana pour on with Reeve Gauche. I mean, it's not just limited to that. It's obviously like, it's different. It's different enough that you could buy them. I like that though. I do worry though that I may have enough sense to cover what that does. But it does do a lot. Next up, we will try the old Yuzu Fu. Fu. Now, I imagine this... Oh, hey, honestly. I've been doing this the entire time I was setting these up. Yuzu Fu. I imagine since it's got, like, the Yuzu in the name, there's going to be some Yuzu. I don't know what Fu is, though. This was released in 2008. Same perfumer as usual, Marc Antoine Corticciato. Bright and invigorating, the crackling scent of Japanese yuzu set in a cocktail of concentrated citrus extracts topped off with an icy splash of mint. The Bina Absolute and a green bamboo accord boost the coolness of this crazy yuzu. Ooh, is that what foo means, is it? So the top notes are yuzu, bitter orange, mint and kumquat. Mid notes are lemon verbena, bamboo and cedar. And the base notes are neroli and white musk. So I wouldn't be expecting this to be a performance king, you know. Oh no, stop that. He is a fool. Oof. That is bright. Almost too bright. Getting a lot of the mint. Orange. Yuzu. There's a lot going on at the beginning. They're all competing. They're all screaming out for attention. You know? Very dry, though. It's what it feels like. It feels dry, you know, like dry wine. It leaves you more thirsty than when you began. Feels dehydrating. Starchy. A bit of orange. Mm. It's very zesty, and I mean, it's very rindy. You know, like imagine the rind of those citruses. There's a greenness there, as well as a citrus. Um, if you like citrus fragrances, this would be a very good fragrance to look into. If you like citrus fresh fragrances, well done, well made. Ones that are like impressive. Different. <coughs> Very interesting. A little bit green from that bamboo, mint, lemon verbena tr trio. Triumvirate. It's got that sort of thing. That sort of power shouting, 
screaming at the top. The mint stays like the like the citrus when you first smell it. The citrus hits you, and then as an aftertaste or an after smell, you get the mint. It's well done. Next, we have Aziade. This is meant to be completely different. Released in 2008. Hold on, I'll spray this. Oh, don't not work. Oh, the sprayer on this isn't great, like I won't lie to you. Okay. So, this was released in 2008. It is supposed to be like an ambery, warm, spicy thing. Top notes are plum, dates, pomegranate, orange, and almond. And the mid notes are caraway, cinnamon, cardamom, and ginger. And then the base notes are incense, tobacco, French labdanum, vanilla, patchouli, and musk. Musk. Aziade was presented in 20, 2008 and named after the book known also as Constantinople by Pierre Lotti, half autobiographic novel based on a diary written by a French officer in Greece and Istanbul in the autumn and winter of 1876. The book tells, of, tells a story of Lotti's forbidden love for an 18-year-old Aziade, a girl from Harem, as well as about his friendship with Spanish servant Solomon. Perfume Aziade was created to interpret love, passion and erotics as a perfume for pure ecstasy. It opens with pomegranate, crystallised date fruit, almond, orange and dry plum with spicy accords of cardamom, cinnamon, ginger, Egyptian cumin, incense, vanilla, Madagascar vanilla, absolute, patchouli, musk and labdanum. No bass notes then. Um, or mid notes. So... Not a well-written blurb there, but what do I get? Oh, cumin. You get this fruity, you get this fruitiness juxtaposed straight away with this almost sweaty bio spicy warmth. I like the fruit. I do not like cumin in a fragrance. Comes across as B.O. to me. That's what it smells like. Um, vanilla. I get a lot of vanilla. I get a lot of cinnamon. I get a lot of cardamom. A lot of plum and date. A um, little bit of the almond. creaminess you know I imagine like a warm spicy milky drink I get that sweetness but there's this underlying evil <laughs> that smells like bad armpit or bad crotch it's interesting it's very interesting um, I might try it on skin just for shits and giggles, to be honest with you. Um, it's very sweet as well, though. Something with plum, date, cardamom, pomegranate, almond, vanilla is going to be sweet. Though Those are like plum and date are like dark fruits. They, it's got that dark fruit syrupy kind of thing going on as well. But it's not too heavy, it's not too cloggy, it's not too cloying, it's not going to pin you down and be like, ah, here I am, coming to clog up your day. But still, that foulness persists, it lurks beneath, it pops up. I like it for its artistry, I like it for its difference, I like it for its daringness. Like, I have respect for, like, human fragrances. I just don't like them, you know? 
I think there are like it. It does. It smells like bio to me. To some people, it doesn't. To some people, it smells beautiful, warm and creamy and all that. To me, it smells like sweaty armpit, like bad armpit. You know, not a day old, not a two days old, up past that, sweaty, bad. Um. But next, we will go on to one I have not been looking forward to, and this is Trois Fleurs, or Three Flowers. Or Three Fleur, who knows. But this is apparently a big white and yellow floral, and I fear that shit like you wouldn't believe. Um, top notes are Turkish Rose, Galbanum, Ylang Ylang, and Mint. Mid notes are Bulgarian Rose, Tuba Rose, Jasmine, Geranium, Iris. Base notes are Tuba Rose again, Jasmine again, and White Musk. I'm not even sure I want to spray this. Christ, the things I do for first impressions. Right. Oh, God. Right, trois fleurs. Brace yourselves. I'm just letting it waft off a little bit. Let's have a smell. I do not hate that. I do not hate that at all. That is very floral. Right? But I do not hate that like you would think I would hate it. Like I thought I would hate it. Right, so the white florals are coming through a lot more now. So I may, I may, I may come to hate it. It's very floral. It's more floral than it is white floral. You know? I'm getting more of the, I'm getting more of the rose. I'm getting more of the stem. I'm getting... Geranium, strangely enough, and mint, because there's geranium and mint, so I'm getting slight hints of geranium pour monsieur. I'm getting now the beginnings of a green tuberose stem. It's a little bit like Nuida Bacalite, which I also don't hate. Very gardeny. Smells like a garden. You know, like on a on a warm spring day, like an early May day. Tasty. There's a little bit of saltiness there. Getting a little bit of a shampoo vibe. I'm not sure what that's from. Could be like from the rose. The rose doesn't feel like a like a like a rose rose, like a pink or a red rose. It just feels like like aura of rose. It's, it gives off this overall bouquet kind of smell that's not one distinctive it's not one distinctive flower you know I'm getting stem I'm getting petal I'm getting branch I'm getting leaf I'm getting flowers in the ground flowers still a lot freshly freshly picked flowers Very good. I would never wear this. I would never buy this. I would never wear it. Because um, it's not my thing. It's not for me. But this is very nice. It's got this kind of... Female, feminine, 
fresh youth, young woman kind of kind of smell, but there's something more to it. It's obviously got like depth, you know. I imagine if you put this on skin or smelled it later, which I am not going to do, um, but if you put it on skin, I imagine this would do lots of different things. Um, just none of which I want to know about because I don't care for florals, you know. Um, and last but certainly not least is a 2009 release called Wazamba. And Wazamba is a fragrance presented in 2009 inspired by a West African instrument which was used at important ceremonies. The fragrance is characterised by incense essences from Somalia, myrrh from Kenya, Indian sandalwood and cypress from Morocco, fir tree resin and apple zest. Well, let's have a look. Big incense at the top. So top notes are incense, cypress, red apple and aldehydes. Mid notes are myrrh, gal, olibanum, labdanum and plum. And the base notes are incense again, resin, apopinax, sandalwood and fern. Sounds like it's going to be an amber. Don't you stop working as well. Two of the samples in here haven't been great. Ooh, instantly, in the air, I get this dryness. Dry dustiness. Oh, what does that remind us of? It's very incensey. It's very incensey. Strong incense. Cypress as well, to be fair. Not getting much else. Getting like a green incense. I'm just trying to let it. I'm getting dry resin. Dry incense, dry resin. It's got a touch of camel about it by zoologist, although not as sweet. Camel's got dates and stuff at the top. This has got plum in to be found, red apple. I like this, but it is very dry and incensey and green. There's not much else I can say about it at this, at this precise minute because it's just very potent. And excuse me whilst I hydrate once more. Kind of very imagine like fresh incense, like green incense. You know, I know incense doesn't grow on trees, but imagine like imagine a dry forest. Imagine a dry forest. I'm not getting much, much other than incense at the minute and dry, smoky, green <laughs> smell. I'll come back to that. It's almost got a shitty kind of aspect to it as well. Like a, like a, like a, you know, like manure on the wind. That kind of aspect. Anyway. First up was Fougere Bengal. That's lovely. It's really nice. I'm getting like a more a more sort of tonka bean sort of thing coming out of that now. Um, a dry, roasted, 
almost coffee kind of vibe. Toffee, caramel aspects of Tonkin Bean. Next up we had Yuzu Fu. That's very green now. It's very minty. Something a little bit off-putting about it though. Something I don't like, and almost plasticky. Kind of vibe, I wonder what that could be. But it's not, it's not great. Minty though, it's got this kind of dry mint going on. As a yard, eh? Are you still gonna smell like armpit? Ever so slightly. I'll try that on skin. I'll try that on skin. See if that warm spicy thing does something different on my skin. It's ever so slightly there. It's nice though. A little bit sweet. Reminds us a little bit of um, Ambra Rousse. And the way the sweetness and the creaminess sort of take the edge off each other. Like the, the creaminess takes the edge off the sweetness. Yeah, Trifleur. That's very much a that's very much a tuber rose perfume to me. That now, on first blast, it was not bad, but it's got it's got a lot more traditionally floral, tuber rosy, salty, stemmy. I wouldn't wear anything like that. And then was Amber. It's got a bit more resinous, but it's extremely dry, dry smoke, you know? Not acrid, not wet, not, not dank, nothing like that. It's just dry smoke. Very... I'll try that on skin as well, see what it does, see how we get on. Um, okay, so that has been the five for today. I've managed to keep this one under 30 minutes. Um, if you have watched to the end, I appreciate it greatly. Thank you. I will see you again soon with the last box from this sample set that we will go through and we'll see where we go cheers everybody i will see you again soon bye